Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Well, this week we continue with coverage from the U.S. Meat Export Federation meeting that was recently held in Kansas City. And one of the presenters was Don Close from Rabobank. Well, he'll share with us his thoughts on the future of the protein markets around the world. We'll also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, along with our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and Markets with Paragon Ag Advisors. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919, kfb.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leading in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online, kswheat.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future of Kansas Corn, online, kscorn.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, industrial hemp, the new buzzword in Kansas agriculture, but a message is clear. No hemp or hemp-derived products, including CBD oil, are currently approved for use in animal feed, including pet food. Well, that's the word from the Kansas Department of Agriculture officials during a recent webinar with K-State Research and Extension agents and specialists. The Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018, many of us know that as the Farm Bill, did expand production opportunities for growing hemp around the country. Now, this year, though, is the first year it's legal to grow in Kansas, but only within the research program that is outlined by the Farm Bill. The department has developed the Kansas Industrial Hemp Research Program and that offers potential for diversification for Kansas farmers looking for an alternative crop or for a new farming enterprise perhaps according to Ag Secretary Mike Beam. Now industrial hemp can be used in various products including paper, biodegradable plastic and construction materials. Well, agriculture groups applauding the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for finalizing its rule exempting livestock farmers from reporting to state and local authorities those routine emissions that come from their farms. The Fair Agricultural Reporting Method, or Farm Act, fixed a problem that was created in April of 2017 when a U.S. Court of Appeals rejected a 2008 EPA rule that exempted farmers from reporting routine farm emissions under that Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, or CERCLA. It's commonly known as the Superfund Law. CERCLA, used primarily to deal with those clean hazardous waste sites, but also includes a mandatory federal reporting component. Now, the appeals court ruling would have forced tens of thousands of livestock farmers to guesstimate, if you will, then report the admissions from manure on their farms to a U.S. Coast Guard's National Response Center, then subject them to citizen lawsuits from possible activist groups. EPA's new rule does exempt farmers from having to make reports to state and local first responders under the Federal Emergency Planning and Community Right to Known Act, or EPCRA. It's adjunct to CERCLA, and they have hazardous emissions on their farm. The state and local first responders have been clear from the beginning that they consider these reports unnecessary and burdensome. Instead, they prefer to keep open lines of communication and information at the local level is sharing with those farmers. That's Ag News. More coming up. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web, oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA. Org. Grass and Grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. 
and Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. More at ksgrainsorghum.org. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. And joining us now, Don Close from Robo Bank, one of the presenters at the U.S. Meat Export Federation meeting in Kansas City. And uh, Don, uh, seems like we're making this almost a semi-annual uh, uh, get together. You and I are uh, talking about what's going on in the protein world. Uh, sure. wh what'd you tell folks here, looking into the future? Well, the uh, the real, you know, just so much volatility. Uh, we're we're still looking at the risk of record production of all three of our major species and, and the domestic supply that we have. That's offset with the, uh, the uncertainties of ASF, China, Southeast Asia, just how much demand there could be for protein late third, fourth quarter, or, or even into 2020. And, and if those two issues have not been enough, now we've got this uncertainty with what will we have for a feed grain supply with these planting problems. So, you know, I think if there's any safe comment to make at all is that volatility is going to be unprecedented. Well, it seems like uh, the reports, uh, they, they're, they're, they're kind of a, a sending a mixed message when it comes to uh, our cold storage reports mm -hmm. uh, and on a weekly basis. Uh, it seems like what we give some one week, we take away the next. I, I really, ha I, I was very uh, pleased with the cold storage report from earlier this week. Uh, the drawdown both on uh, on bone-in cut beef and, and boneless beef uh, really paints a positive picture for how we're holding a demand base. And if you just look at the uh, the, the total uh, wholesale expenditures we're seeing has shown, has, has suggested that was the case, and we're just getting reinforcement of that with the cold storage numbers, that's good news. Southeast Asia, is that, uh, you know, we talk about waiting for China, and, and many are saying, let's not wait anymore, but is Southeast Asia the silver bullet we've been looking for? I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with saying that much complications both to animal agriculture and, and global food supplies, a silver bullet. Um, it, is, it is clearly the the worst animal health crisis that we have seen in modern history. I, I think that's a safe statement to make. I think the, uh, the timeline that it could take before we get this thing cleaned up and, and get back into a production curve um, could take substantially longer than, than the six months, two year time. I think we're talking three to five years minimum and that could easily be rolled into a, a five to 10 year timeline. I, I think it's a safe assumption that before this is done, they will have completely restructured commercial hog production in China. The, the classic backyard producer will be removed from the picture. So there's some huge changes that will come from this. We're talking with Don Close from Robo Bank. We're going to continue this conversation in just a moment and get his take on what happens if and when ASF comes to North America and how that imp could impact all the protein. So stay with us. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. And agview.net, 
covering news and views in the Beef Belt and Western Corn Belt. Reliable and relevant, agview.net. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. And joining us this week, Don Close from Robo Bank. Uh, he is at the USMBF meeting in Kansas City. And uh, Don, as we talked about, uh, uh, African swine fever has just uh, really been a, a impacting uh, really all the proteins. But we continue to have this conversation. What happens if it does hit North America? How devastating will that be? You, you, I'm really getting mixed signals on that. You know, and, you, and you, if you listen from comments from some of the uh, the veterinary professionals that have been in China, you you are clearly getting a, a response that it's it's not a question of if it's a, a question of when. Since that time, I've I've heard a lot of things that I I find encouraging. The first example they they bring up is the number of years that uh, the U.S. has been. Uh, testing for and preventing for FMD and how well good a job we've done there. I think that's encouraging. I uh, saw, saw some stories earlier this morning that agreement has been reached between the U.S. and Canada on regional, in the case that there is an outbreak, we'll, we'll do trade on a regionalized basis. That's really good news and we need to get that clause in a lot of other agreements. Uh, the, the other thing with the one of the maps that was shown yesterday, if you look at the density of hog population in China opposed to the regionalized production of hogs in the U.S., we have a much better opportunity at isolation and eradication than, than basically anybody in China or Southeast Asia. Uh, a couple of things right quick. Uh, one, you talked about uh, one of the earlier presentations at this meeting. Uh, talk about the dairy industry and the impact worldwide we could see. Uh, are, are big changes coming to dairy? We're seeing some. I don't know that to say that there's big changes. We've clearly been seeing net liquidation of cows for the last six, eight months. Uh, just on the weekly slaughter data and and we've seen enough of an improvement in milk price that we're seeing some improvement in the global market, seeing a little bit of improvement in the U.S. and, and starting to see some evidence that that rate of cow liquidation is slowing down. Um, I don't want to be overly optimistic on dairy but I think to reach a level of stability in dairy is very likely. Okay, let's jump back. USMCA, we talk about China, we talk about every other market, but really the two most important ones are just right near us. Yes. Well, and clearly, the, the first observation I would make is when we reach the, uh, the impasse with China or, or this, uh, this cool-off period, as we've heard it referenced, um, Clearly, the emphasis of the administration shift back to getting some resolve at USMCA, that was immediately followed with the removal of the uh, steel and aluminum tariff. You've had the, the legislative changes in Mexico to, to get the approval. I, I think I, all, all parties involved need that trade so badly. I, I think like, like when we... Um, got the NAFTA agreement, you know, we, we talked ugly about it until the, the House vote and, and, and a very narrow passage. I think we'll ultimately see a similar conclusion this time. All right, so before we let you go, bullish or bearish looking to the future when it comes to our proteins? On um, proteins, short term, I'm very cautious and just take the, the seasonal decline we've had in cattle prices over the last uh, three and a half, four weeks. Long term, I both from the a human population view, if you look at the animal health issue view, I'm incredibly optimistic. I just think it's going to be a lot of volatility to get from here to there. 
Don Close from Rabobank has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. Hi, my name is Lavelle Windsor and my family farms near Perry, Kansas. Uh, we raise corn and soybeans. And um, I am really happy to be here today with Common Ground for the Yoga on the Farm event. Um, this is the second Yoga on the Farm that I've been part of. And it's just one of those events that everybody loves to come to, um, loves to be outside and get to enjoy nature like we do. And I actually think that um, being in touch with those local consumer, consumers, we can actually have the most impact um, because they, they live in the exact same communities as we do. Um, we're sending our kids to school and feeding them the same food from the grocery store that they are as well and making that connection is really key um, I think having a face um, uh, alongside them that they can recognize um, helps them to understand that um, this isn't something some scary them out there about 95% of farms are family farms and I always try um, to to let people know that that our farm is a third generation farm it was started by my husband's grandparents and his dad could continued to farm and now he and his brother farm and we're hopefully raising the fourth generation on our farm but not just our farm is like that almost every single farm that I know is something some variation just exactly like that so um, if you're comfortable with our farm being a family farm it just think of almost every single other or 95 percent of those other farms being exactly like that Kansas corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver for the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow research program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. The Hard Winter Wheat Genetics Research Unit recently moved into the building that previously housed the Wind Erosion Unit, which was relocated after it was destroyed by a tornado in 2008. The building is around 10,000 square feet, and it's modern technology, which allows them to grow wheat year-round in their large growth room equipped with LED lights. Mary Gutierre, USDA Research Geneticist, says being able to grow wheat 365 days a year is a huge benefit to wheat research. The renovated building provides space to benefit all aspects of the program. Being able to do all of these projects under one roof is a huge benefit for the wheat research team. With the endless support from her administration, Gutierre is making breakthroughs. She can replicate the exact conditions farmers see in the field with the technology available in the research unit. Gutierre has partnered with the Kansas State University research team to collaborate on wheat research. A big goal for the Hard Winter Wheat Genetics Research Unit 
is to get the wheat to grow from the young stages to the adult stages with no threats of disease on the crop. Gutierrez says, in the small amount we have done in the field testing, the results are amazing. With the results the research team has been seeing, a wheat line with resistance to stripe rust should be available to farmers in the near future. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. We're going to be traveling the state this summer to celebrate our centennial anniversary. The tour will be Monday, July 29th through Wednesday, July 31st. So we'll start on Monday with a, a tour up at Juniper Hills Farm, north of Lawrence. Uh, we'll have lunch that day down at Dale Banks Angus. And then we'll make our way to Wichita and tour the Blue Stem Elementary School and have a meal that evening at Everly Farms. Um, from there, uh, on Tuesday, we'll, we'll go to Wichita and, and tour Cargill's new facility. We'll also see the Stafford County Flour Mill. Um, and so we'll just do a variety of activities like that throughout the state. So if you're in the area and want to join us for one of the tours, we encourage you to go to our website. There's a, a link to it on our homepage, and um, so you can see an agenda. You can sign up. There's a registration form, so you can sign up. Um, if there is a meal included, um, there will be a $10 fee. Um, there is no transportation included, so if you want to go to one of the stops, we'll just meet you there. And um, we really would love to have you all there to, to just join other Farm Bureau members in the area and celebrate our, our organization. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. The Kansas Beef Council has partnered with food influencer and blogger The Salty Marshmallow, a Midwest mom located in Manhattan, to develop a family-friendly and nutritious beef recipe that is being distributed to an audience of potentially millions. This checkoff funded partnership resulted in the creation of a ground beef fried rice recipe that can be prepared in less than 30 minutes, making it an ideal solution for older millennial parents. In addition to the recipe, the salty marshmallow shared that beef is packed with protein and provides 10 essential nutrients. Through online and social media channels, the Salty Marshmallow averages more than 2 million website visitors and 12 million Pinterest users per month. The recipe can be found on thesaltymarshmallow.com. Data on how many consumers the recipe and information is reaching will continue to be collected over the next 12 months of the campaign. 
An increasing number of consumers are turning to influential bloggers and social media personalities for information, especially when it comes to food and recipe options. By partnering with influencers, checkoff dollars are helping distribute accurate information to a much larger consumer base. This partnership is just one of many the Kansas Beef Council is using to increase beef demand. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. My name is Aaron Summer with Paragon Ag and I'm here to talk about the cash grain markets. As the markets have been rallying this past couple of weeks, we have seen basis stepping back little by little mostly every day. The wet weather has been affecting basis also with the uncertainty of the quality and quantity of this upcoming crop, as well as interrupted logistics. Mississippi River above St. Louis has been unable to move barges, making for an interesting situation in those markets. Along the Missouri River and through the country, truck lanes have been inaccessible because of flooding during a wrench into the truck movement. Planning progress continues to lag behind the five-year average of 96% at 67% planter for this week. Bean basis is also a bit weaker with the rally. Similar to corn, planting progress has been seriously affected by the weather. USDA had planting at 39% when the five-year average was at 79. Logistics are an issue with the beans as well. There are still a good number of beans on farm that will have to come to town sometime. Basis has been backed off a bit, but there are still opportunities for pushes for guys who will look for them. Wheat conditions were shown to have improved from last week. The USDA had winter wheat at 64% good to excellent, while last week it was at 61% good to excellent. In Kansas, we have seen water standing in poorly drained fields and the wheat turning white. As you know, this can lead to low test weight in that wheat and potentially other quality issues. New crop basis has been pulling back a little as we get closer to harvest. I would expect to see buyers looking to start buying with protein scales and guaranteed qualities here even before we get into harvest. If you have any other questions or are looking to sell some grain, give us a call at 888-452-8751. Well, that's our show this week. Be social with us online at kansasagreport.net. Like us on Facebook at Kansas Ag Report Television Show. Follow us on Twitter at Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.